Okay, no, you're fine. Okay. We're live. Hello, everybody. I'm here with Exit. Uh, hi. So, tonight... Uh, tonight was a, uh... Oh, God. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, you have the stream playing. You have the stream playing, don't you? Uh, or do I have the stream playing? I'm confused. Oh, God. Oh, no, I do. Where is it? I, okay, I fixed it. Jesus, that was terrifying. <laughs> I could hear myself speaking with like a 10, uh, like a 10 second delay and it was awful, <laughs> but it's better now. Uh, anyways, no, that was, no, your echo was different. This, I had to stream in a different browser tab. Oh, they can't hear you. Here, let me fix that. Okay. Um... Why does this plugin always break? Uh, probably because it says plugin comma beta. That's probably the reason. <laughs> but anyway, it should is fixed that out. Would yep, yep. <laughs> I, I, maybe I should get a a plugin that doesn't say plugin Sorry. comma beta. <laughs> maybe I should get like just plugin. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, they can hear you now. I mean, we've made it. Did you hear what happened tonight? Uh, in your, uh, your little area over you? there. <laughs> um, there was a Shah a Shahed attack tonight. I don't know if you've heard about it. Um, it was pretty recent. Oh, no, I have In that it was a few moments ago. Um, how do you pronounce this? Is it Rennie? Rennie or Rini? Rennie? Yeah. Which one is it? Rennie. <laughs> Rennie? Anyways, there was an attack on the Rennie. The first one. Uh, where is Rennie? I forgot where Rennie is. Is it? <laughs> You're somewhere. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, yeah. So um, there was an attack there tonight. Uh, I've heard that there was about a dozen, or I mean a half dozen Shahed. Maybe. Um, lots of air defense firing. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if you wanted to, to talk about, talk about Rennie. I mean, I, you, I know you, you don't, you don't know what happened tonight. I mean, I don't either. I just know that it happened. I don't know what happened, but, uh, do you want to talk about what Rennie is? Yeah. So Men Rennie is a port on the Danube River. Um, the Danube River is literally split in half. Half of it is um, property of Ukraine and the other half of it is property of uh, Romania. Um, so when they're hitting this port, they have already had two Shaheds drop on Romanian territory that have been confirmed by the government there. There was reports of a third Shahed, but Apparently, that one um, is not confirmed by the government for some interesting reason I haven't quite understood yet. Um, at any rate, it they continue to hit this port, um, as well as there's two other ports. There's really Rennie and Ishmael are the two that they continue to hit um, because they are the most active Ukrainian ports now that the Odessa ports are completely shut down. Um, and so obviously they're just trying to shut down shipping out of Ukraine altogether because they've got basically everything else shut down. Um, and it's super frustrating because there doesn't seem to be a lot that can be done to stop the attacks right now. And they don't have enough air defense to fully protect the ports. Um, so a lot of these Shaheds are actually hitting critical infrastructure and doing quite a decent amount of damage. Um, and yeah, Russia's a bunch of dicks. Yeah. So uh, I know 
I know that Ukraine is like running. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a fundraiser. I think, <laughs> I think it's a fundraiser, but it's basically like a call to action for the Ukrainian people to, uh, buy more air defense, basically like, uh, air defense trucks. Um, and when I, when I heard this, I wondered if, if the, the goal was to put a whole bunch more air defense trucks over here in this like little, uh, Danube area. <laughs> uh, so, so I, from, from what I've heard, I don't, I don't actually know much about this, this fundraiser. I just know that it exists. I, I read like, a like a telegram post about it basically. So, uh, the, basically they, they said that, uh, the goal was to have trucks that were self-contained in that, uh, the truck will carry its own weapon, its own, um, equipment, all of its own equipment and all of its own ammo on a single truck. Uh, so that, that is the goal. Um, so the crew will have to do like everything. Uh, so, uh, in other words, there, there will not be, um, like ammo trucks. There won't be like dedicated radar trucks or anything like that. So it, each truck is, is supposed to be independent and, um, they want to buy like a thousand of them or something. And, uh, I'm not sure what the weapon system would be. Uh, I don't know if it will be like, um, like a 23 millimeter or like a 50 cal or what I have no clue what the weapon is. I also don't know if it's like radar guided or human, you know, manual <laughs> old, old fashioned guided, you know, with, uh, the Mark one eyeball. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, I just, I just know that that's like a thing they're, they're trying to do right now. Um, what you're describing kind of sounds a little bit related to that Australian company that we were looking at their product offering the other day, um, that they just run some tests for the Ukrainian government in the US, um, which obviously we don't have any idea if those two things are related, but um, being a truck mounted system and one that could be easily um, movable, that system would particularly fit into that idea and that space. Okay. I just don't know if it could take down the actual Shaheds. It, did, it yeah. didn't seem to me from that that it could. Well, I think, I think the, why am I so loud here? I'm, I'm trying to like fix why I'm so loud because you're, you're fine. It's just like, I'm wildly loud for some reason. Here, let me do this. Uh, cause I'm usually, I'm usually quiet. It's, it's, it's weird to be loud. It's usually everyone's yelling at me cause I'm too quiet. Um, anyways, I, I think it's better now. Um, uh, that weapon I'm pretty sure can kill a, a, a Shahed, uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. the issue was it would struggle with like Orleans and stuff. And the Orleans are a bigger threat. Um, uh, it's interesting, though, because most of what I've seen headed to these specific ports are just Shaheds. That's, like, the majority of what's actually being thrown out the ports. These ports is the Shaheds. Yeah. Yeah, with, with these ports, yes. So, uh, yeah, the, generally speaking, the Orlin drones and all of the other similar drones, the, they're big, like... Like their main drones, like the, those the big ones. No, I'm not talking about like a little quad drones. Like uh, I'm talking about like their main line, like military drones, are probably one of the biggest threats that Ukraine has right now, just because they can spot, uh, you know, all of Ukraine's assets, and Ukraine can't really do much about it. And then those assets can be targeted by whatever they want to target it with, whether it's a, a missile or a plane or a lancet or whatever. So those drones are like Ukraine's biggest threat. So generally speaking, you would want to shoot them down. <laughs> but, um, and, and those, th those, uh, the Australian thing, I don't think it can shoot them down because they fly too high. Um, mm. but they could shoot down a Shahed. A Shahed flies very low. And, uh, 
and uh, th- those things like their their main weakness is that they can't detect drones from very far away. Um, like its range is less than three kilometers or whatever that it can spot. But with a Shahed, you're not going to be able to spot it that far away anyway because it flies so low to the ground and there are going to be a bunch of obstacles in the way. So you're not going to have the line of sight to see them that far to begin with. So like three kilometers mm-hmm. is fine. Um, so they they could probably pretty easily shoot down Shaheds. And, and a Shahed is a pretty easy target, um, especially if you have the, a guided weapon like uh, i think those are optically guided or something or they have some some right. sort of tracking <laughs> that's not just the person aiming it and pulling a trigger uh so uh, i i think they could shoot down your heads i'm pretty sure they can i i have it's just that they can't shoot down like orleans which which are a bigger threat than a shahed but a shahed is also a threat so shooting down your head's obviously good it's just that shooting down the Orlin would be really nice <laughs> because there's there's a real, it's like there's so few things that Ukraine has that can shoot them down, just because they're hard to see, um, hmm. uh, and Ukraine doesn't have that much air defense, unfortunately. They they they're using most of their air defense to guard critical infrastructure, and they don't have the ability to uh, to plug all the holes in their giant country. Where all the little Orleans fly through, and and all the other well, drones do. It's not just Orleans. The closer we get to winter, the more there will be critical infrastructure that needs protection, and that will is just a bigger priority than the ports, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, it's uh, something no one's really looking forward to. Uh, I know people are freaking out about it already, and they have been for a long time. Which gets me back to the whole reason that um, I know people don't want to hear it, but unfortunately, the Black Sea Grain Initiative was really useful in that when Russia was a part of it, they weren't attacking ports. Um, And if you can sign that agreement again and you don't have to protect your ports from Russian strikes, that's more air defense that you can take and redistribute to other areas. Yeah, that is a benefit. <laughs> oh, man. It's just, uh, it's all very frustrating. Uh, people are talking about Gepard's. Uh, Gepard has the same problem as these other guns do from Australia, and that a Gepard's effective range is less than five kilometers. And these drones fly, um, how high do they fly <laughs> in, in kilometers? Uh, uh, just do the math in the thingy. It's uh, yeah, they 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 fly five kilometers up. Um, so if 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 the drone is flying five kilometers high in the air, and your range is less than five kilometers, then you're gonna have trouble shooting them. It's, it's not hard. I mean, it's, it's it's harder to shoot them, especially uh, if you like draw out the triangle and the. Uh, you know, the, with your sokas and your toas and all that stuff, uh, you're going to have to do uh, longer than five kilometers to hit it if it's not directly above you. So, uh, yeah, the, the Gepard can't shoot them down. You need something with, like, much longer range. You know what would be great? A 57 millimeter. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, you need something bigger than a... 30 mil, unfortunately. You need more like a 57 or something even bigger, maybe. Or a missile. But the, the issue with missiles is that they're expensive. Um, and also, you need the radar. The radar is also the issue. It's not just the guns, the range. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, the news today that I have is unfortunately not terribly in- interesting. So I'm just curious if there's news that you want to talk about today. Um, I guess I would say there was a lot of news yesterday. There wasn't so much news today. Yeah, well, sure. Um, uh, just over over the weekend, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just pulling it up so that I actually have it in front of me. I think the main thing that we saw yesterday. 
um, was that Defense, Defense Intelligence Ukraine um, put out a much longer video about their operations in the Black Sea to kind of, um, I wouldn't even say that they took control of the Boyka Towers so much as they ran some missions to access them, found more um, ammunition, some helicopter ammunition, some other miscellaneous ammunition there, um, some really important radar uh, systems, as well as an EW system that, of course, we don't really know if the EW system is operational. But if it was, uh, that A, could benefit Ukraine, and B, benefits them just by taking it out of service. Um, so that essentially will give them more ability to operate within the Black Sea because Russia won't have the same kind of ISR available. So that was a really interesting, quite big story that I think... Um, slid past a few people, unfortunately, because it happened quite early in the morning in North America time, but pretty good deal. Um, then what else? Um, and then it came out, the other really big story from yesterday was that the UK declassified some intel on a Russian attack on a civilian ship um, it said that a Russian warship had shot two caliber missiles at a Liberian flagged cargo ship berthed in the port of Odessa on August 24th, and both missiles were shot down. Um, that's a really big deal, like Wait, a what, really, really big deal. What date was it? August 24th. Okay. So that's not very long ago. No, that's uh, like two weeks ago, give or take. Oh, just over, almost three weeks ago now, sorry. Um, so that's a really big deal for a couple of reasons. A, the last ship for the grain initiative had already left by that point. Like it had left a long time before that in the middle of July. And actually the very last ship for the grain deal delivered on that day to a port in Iraq. So um, that was like a really a poignant day for myself and Smog because we'd been tracking it and kind of guessing what day it would actually be delivered. And that would kind of signal the end of the grain deal officially because there was no more ships to track. And that happens to be the day that they attacked this ship that was in port in Odessa. It's also a really big deal because... Um, there haven't been attacks by Russia on civilian ships for the most part. There was like one or two over in Mykolaiv, but the most part, there haven't been attacks on civilian ships, definitely in the Odessa ports, since the beginning of the war. And so um, the fact that they actually targeted a ship on that date is uh, very notable. Number one, I would call it an escalation. Number two, um, and then the fact that Ukraine shot down those missiles is also quite notable, because um, obviously Ukraine is currently trying to convince a whole bunch of ship owners that hey, it's safe to come down our corridor and then go into the port of Odessa and sit there and get loaded for four or five days, however long that takes and then sail back out again. Um, and when you know that Russia is actually willing to attack civilian ships, that adds a new level of, um, or a new dimension that you probably haven't thought of before. But if Russia, or if Ukraine, sorry, can prove that they can stop Russian missiles from hitting those ships, maybe that, can tell ship owners that it is safer than they think, or at least put a question in their mind. I don't know. Um, I haven't heard of any ship owners yet that are specifically wanting to take that risk. Um, and there is grain for sale out of Odessa right now, but it's unbelievably high 
well, the grain is quite low priced, but the ships are charging a premium to go there if they even would. And the insurance to cover a trip there is very, very high priced, which means that your entire trip and your delivery um, just adds so much more to the grain price that you're, it's just not economically viable to buy Ukrainian grain out of Odessa right now. So those are kind of the two big things that happened. There's some other stuff going over on the Kerch Bridge today. Um, I have some breaking news. Uh, oh, go for it. Uh, well, there are explosions in um, the uh, Inkerman area of uh, Sebastopol. And um, the uh, the Kerch Bridge is apparently closed now. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's uh, the, the breaking news. So the Kerch Bridge has been closing like once a day, <laughs> like every couple days at least, um, for the better part of the last 10 days. Um, so I don't know that we should put too much credit yeah, into is, the Kerch uh, Bridge closing. This is a video from uh, Sebastopol right now. Um, you can see by the violent shaking that things are exploding. Um, uh, you can't, oh, yeah, and you can see... You can't hear the, the audio, topic. but the audio sounds like this. Boom! That's the audio. I did hear it for a second. Boom! <laughs> that's... Anyways. That's awesome. Uh, so that's... I uh, take that. that's, uh, that's what's going on in Sebastopol right now. <laughs> so, and over by the Kerch Bridge, um, the Russian Navy today made all of the cargo ships move away from the bridge usually they are anchored closer to the bridge but there was a report about 10 days ago that um the ukrainian usvs had tried to attack the bridge and then they had been shot at and one of them turned around and hid in the cargo ships and we haven't really been able to get enough reports to know that that is an accurate representation of what happened. However, if the Ukrainian or the Russian Navy is telling cargo ships that they need to move further away from the bridge, that might point to the fact that there's some truth to that um, report because it might mean that they're moving them further away so that a USV couldn't go hide amongst them and the next time that that type of thing happened. We don't really know. There's not enough information, but um, there's a bunch of little data points that we can start to consider and see what story they tell. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, I um I found the uh, the post I was talking about before about the um, building uh, anti aircraft vehicles. Um, I'm mm. just gonna put the text. Uh, I'm just copy and pasting it and putting that's the text on the screen so people can just can just read it. Uh, this is an auto translate, so um, deal with it. <laughs> uh, so you can just uh, read that text if you want to. Um, this is not an official statement. This is just uh it's just what's happening. It's just the, uh, um, uh, anyways. So, uh, yeah, I think this is like the first batch of, uh, of what they want to build. I think they, they basically just want to build like tons of these. And, uh, I remember like last year, like in the beginning of the war in like March and April, I was talking about how Ukraine should build these. And everybody was saying I was crazy. <laughs> I feel very redeemed that they're they're actually building them now. Because <laughs> I, I really thought they should have built them last year. Uh, You're crazy, but not for this one. <laughs> everybody was like, but there's not even radar. They were like, well, okay. Uh, I mean, if it works at this point. I don't care if there's radar, yeah. just that it works. Because the thing with, with these sorts of uh, weapons is that 
Um, one of them probably isn't going to shoot anything down, and 10 of them might shoot, like, one thing down. Um, but if you have enough of them, they'll shoot things down reliably. And they are really your last line of defense. They're not your only line of defense, and they're not your first line of defense. These guys are for if everything else fails. <laughs> that's, that's their job, you know, because they're going to have a range of maybe 2,000 meters. Um, and uh, basically, whenever they see something, they're just going to unload all their ammo <laughs> at it. And if they're lucky, maybe one of the bullets hits. That's that's basically what these trucks are going to be. And you just need enough of these trucks that they can hit stuff. <laughs> uh, each individual truck has a very low chance of actually hitting. Um, and yeah, if there were radar systems and stuff installed on the trucks, that would be cool. But those radar systems cost a lot of money. And... Um, you need a lot of trucks, and you don't have infinite money, unfortunately. So, uh, and and also, all, all like not all the attacks, but like a lot of these attacks, Russia's only shooting what like five or six shahids. So if if these trucks can shoot down like one or two shahids, that makes a real, really big difference. It makes me kind of wonder because um, most of the shahid attacks on other areas haven't they been closer to like eight to ten or is it are most of them uh, are five to six? i really don't know um i know that like uh the dnipro uh petrovsk people um they 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 said they shot down 11 shaheds not not yesterday but the day before they shot down 11 that they claim and uh, Sumi said they shot down one, and I have, I have no stats for Cherniev, and I have no stats for anywhere else. But I do know that uh, Krivi Re was the main target in that in that attack, so uh, they shot down eleven, mm -hmm. um, and I believe there were at least two waves, and there may have been more waves. Uh, so I'm not sure how many were shot, uh, and I'm not sure how big each wave is. Interesting. Can we put a Maxim gun on an air balloon? <laughs> I mean, you could. Why not? I love balloons. Balloons are great. Uh, I would be so terrified to be in that balloon. <laughs> oh my god! It's just a, it's just a Maxim gun. It's a uh, how? I mean, well, think of it this way: like balloons are really old, right? But Maxim guns uh -huh. are really old, so maybe they're old friends. They could be. I still don't need to be in the balloon. Can we make it remote controlled? Um, maybe. I mean, you probably. Uh, uh, anyways, the, the news, <laughs> the, the frontline news that I can tell you right now is that basically nothing has changed. And that's the news is like nothing happened. Um, but I can go into excruciating detail on how much nothing happened, which I'm going to kind of spare people the excruciating detail. Um, but uh, suffice to say, around uh, Kupiansk, um, there's still assaults and fighting, and some of it's pretty intense, but n nothing really happened. Um, now, near um, Novoyerivka, it's been really intense fighting, but nothing's happened. Like, no land has changed. I don't even have, like, videos to show you. <laughs> like, uh, there's some, like, drones and stuff. Um, I don't know. Oh, man, I need to fix that, apparently. <laughs> uh, that image broke. Uh, but anyways, there's, like, some, uh, some, like, mild drone attacks and stuff, but really nothing. Um, now, down near uh, Kremena, Nothing really happened. Uh, so um, uh, a video came out today where Ukraine destroyed uh, two of... Uh, I actually, I've never actually said this word out loud before. Um, uh, Hyatsin? Hyatsin? Is that how you say it? Hyatsin? Whatever. I give up. 
I'm not even. Gyatsen? Is it Gyatsen? Anyways, Don't this thing. <laughs> you're the one who's supposed to correct me. Anyways, uh, G- Gyatsen? <laughs> Anyways, I don't like, I've never actually said the word out loud, so I've, I did not practice for this. That was just me winging it. Sorry. Anyways, uh, they blew up two of them, which is pretty cool. And they blew them up with like one Gimler, um, which is, it's always great if you can pack your artillery so close together that you can lose two of them to one Gimler. It's great. Great strategy. Um, but other than that, like nothing happens. Um, um, one interesting thing uh, was that uh, Ukraine got shelled in this, um, I think this is a water treatment facility, or at least it used to be before it blew up, um, but uh, they got shelled there, which is interesting, I guess. But other than that, nothing happens. And um, near uh, Sperna, nothing happens. Um, near, wait a second, is this true? That's interesting. I didn't realize that. I don't know if that's accurate. Anyways, uh, near Rostolivka, um, there there was some dronage, uh, and it made me change my map. In that this, uh, this uh, was interesting. Um, this is a new update. Very cool. Uh, I didn't. Re- I should have known this, but I I didn't for some reason. Um, that. Uh, that Ukraine had moved up and set up a uh, like a wall across this uh, like train track and and road. Um, anyway, they they built like barricades here and uh, they've been manning that position for a long time. And I just didn't notice. Um, and I also didn't notice this drone attack was there. I thought it was over here. Well, anyways, um, but anyways, so other wait, than that, nothing those, happened. Yeah. Do those trees still exist, or are they gone? There's no satellite today. At least when I looked, there was it wasn't updated yet. I got you. Now in uh, Berhivka, uh, there was a, a video yesterday of this this uh, this bonfire um, where a bunch of Russians decided to make a bonfire, but they did it in a weird way. What they did is that they crawled into a hole and then they piled wood on top of themselves and lay on fire, which is typically not how you build a bonfire. Um, and what? they realized that and they ran away. You see this guy right there. He's standing there. He's kind of camoed, but he's right there. Um, he uh-huh. ran away. Um, so that was kind of weird. Um, so yeah, I, I can probably show you that video. There's nothing like violent. I, I did write it as misleading. I'll tell you why it's misleading in a second. Um, but yeah, this was a, uh, they, it's typically not how you build a bonfire personally. That's not what I would do. But they did get but up and run away. Like smoke wouldn't like the smoke um draw in people and they'd be paying attention and be more likely to drop things on them. I, I, I don't mean I don't mean they literally build it. They a drone dropped on them and lay on fire. I was just joking. Uh but but yeah, they they ran away. So that was Andrew uh, I'm all for that. <laughs> I was just joking, but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, we, we got confirmation, um, that Ukraine controls that position still. Um, uh, cause, uh, anyway, we got confirmation. I don't know if I should say how we got it. It doesn't really matter, but, um, but yeah, so we, we got confirmation that Ukraine is still in this position, that th- this video was misleading. Russia did attack, and they did take that little piece of ground here. But then, as you see in the video, they immediately ran away, and they didn't come back. So the, Ukraine does still control that spot. Um, it was just a uh, you know a brief embarrassment that the Ukraine lost control very briefly. I just want to take a quick moment and say thank you to all the people laughing at me right now because I'm laughing at me too. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, and there's there's also this other thing here. This was this was interesting. It was interesting because of their explanation of what happened, not necessarily what actually happened. Because um, what actually happened is they flew an FPV drone into a, like a little bunker. I don't know. It's like a hole in the ground, if you want to call that a bunker. But uh, 
anyways, so they, they flew a FPV drone into that, and that's pretty bug standard. That's like an everyday event in this war. <laughs> You're just flying drones in the holes. Um, but their explanation of what happened is interesting because I've never heard of it before. Um, what they did, um, according to them, obviously I have no proof that this has happened, but the the creator of this video claims this is what they did. So they claim that they took two um, gas grenades, like tear gas, and they like zip tied them or whatever to a RPG. And then they put the RPG on the FPV and then they flew that into the hole. Um, so they, they tear gassed while they exploded, uh, basically. So that, that is just an interesting thing that I have not heard done before. And I wonder if it's going to happen more often going forward. Uh, I don't think like militarily it, it'll make a difference. It's just, it's just an interesting thing. Cause I've, I've never heard of that happening before. Um, now I'm um, going south to, uh, Kl uh, Klashivka. There was, uh, um, uh, I think both of these videos were old, but it was, it was kind of interesting. They both came out yesterday. Um, because one was, uh, Ukraine shooting two cluster munitions like right here. And the other one was Russia shooting two rather large, um, missiles or m missile systems. I, I think they were Uragons, but they may have been smarch. I'm not really sure. They were not a grad. They're bigger than a grad. Um, but anyways, they shot two MRLs. Um, and it just really oddly mirrored each other. Cause you could see it, it kind of looks like, uh, it kind of looks like, uh, the Pickums. Um, and those were the, the, the Pickums. But anyways, uh, that, that was, that's just kind of, I thought that was kind of amusing. Um, but beyond that, um, in, uh, Klashivka, the town itself, um, Ukraine is steadily progressing through the town. Um, it seems at this point that in my opinion, I may be wrong, but in my opinion, I don't think Ukraine actually wants to capture Klashivka. I think they want to draw this fight out as long as possible. And the reason why they would want that is because they're winning by so much that drawing the fight out benefits them disproportionately. <laughs> like, uh, I think if Ukraine wanted to, they could capture Kleshivka really rapidly, but I don't think they want to. Um, we talked before about how this main supply road has been completely destroyed. Um, this secondary supply route is a railway. It's unusable. Um, it's unusable first because it's just, it's really close to the front line. You can see that it's like literally like a hundred meters from the front line or something. Um, but it's also, um, this path has been completely exploded by, uh, um, Russia made piles of mines that they're, I think they're planning on building a minefield and they made a bunch of piles of mines and then Ukraine blew up all the mines. So instead of having piles of mines, it's now really deep craters, like really deep craters. And they're like all <laughs> throughout this, this path. So the path is like undrivable in the vehicle. Um, also it's too close to the front, so they can't really use it. Um, this road is completely destroyed and they can't go up. They can't come from the South because Ukraine pretty much controls the South and there's no other road. And who? Yeah. Uh, sorry for coming late. Uh, can you, can I ask you uh, like this for this a bit of a forest that you showed, um, to Klishivka? uh, no, not, not, not. Um, yeah, can could could you zoom in? Yep. Yeah, the, the, there is another ship that that is under red, uh, under Russians. Uh, can you like measure the distance between it and and the entrance into Klishivka itself? Klishivka itself. From from where to where? Well, can you zoom out a bit? You have uh, <laughs> like. 
Okay. Yeah, go go a bit like move the map down if you don't mind. Okay. North. Yeah, this one. Th there is like the uh the part where you have uh like yeah the, from here around from here to the Klishivka itself. It's uh it's about a kilometer more than a kilometer. Well, got it. Got it. Yeah. That's that's the they they use this uh, they go through the fields they have like couple of line trails there that they use and they go there on foot and that's basically their own uh, the only left uh, supply uh, well it's not even supply it's basically you go in and you go out you know, and that that's basically it's not like a supply route because there is like no huge forces to supply. There was this fascinating video that came out just before. Like, I think I think this is new. I've never seen it before. But it came out just before the stream started, and uh, I got it on the map just at the last second. And this this video, um, Ukraine that shoots um, a cluster munition right here, and I'm pretty sure it blows up an ammo cache. Um, yeah, because, uh, what, what, wasn't there like a, another video? I think also on uh, thermal. From another angle and it looks exactly the same like where the clusters drop and there is a huge explosion this follows follows on um i know what you're talking about but i think it's is it this yeah yeah i, I think so can you can you can you check it yeah this was like in the town itself when uh, this was in the town itself. Uh, the video came out today. I don't know what day it happens, though. Mm. Um, is this 80th Brigade? Uh, I'm kind of worried about showing this <laughs> because, yes, it is the 80th Brigade. Um, no, 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 let's not, let's not, let's not uh, risk it. Yeah, because um, it, it does land in a very, it's a really well-aimed artillery shell. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, Kleshivka, I, I think, I think Russia's in a lot of trouble. They're like, I don't know why they're even trying anymore. Like they should just leave, but, but it seems they want to keep trying. And I, I, I think Ukraine should let them keep trying. Why not? I did see a video from there today of them taking down the flag though, which I thought was kind of poignant and probably felt really good while they did it. Did you see that one? Oh, I'll could, could you say that you. again? Sorry. Did you see that one? I'll have to send it to you. No, just describe it again. I missed it. I got a, I got a message and I was reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. I said they, um, I saw a video of them taking down the flag that was on oh, oh, yeah. like mosque. Uh, it was, yeah, the, it was the, the yeah. Wagner, the Wagner flag. Uh, yeah, uh, I have this video here of them. Oh boy. Yes. The the Wagner flag. Uh like one by one all the Wagner flags are getting taken down. That's pretty cool, right? Great. Thank you, Bobby, and thank you, Ozzy, for contributing to the map. I really appreciate it. Um I there there is is there is good news about the map that came out. <laughs> I, I can't talk about it yet, but but there is good news about the map and I'm very excited about it. Um I wish I could give details, but I can't right now. Uh, maybe in a few days. Um uh, anyways, um I, I, I don't really have anything else to say about this area. There was a, a really graphic video. Um this dot right there is a very graphic video. I don't watch it if you if you're not into if you don't want to see a graphic video. So um yeah. Uh that's, I, that's just a whole bunch of okay, so here here's an actual map change, although this this is not in a it, it's not movement. I, I want that to be clear. It's it's not movement. It's just a, it's just a, a map change because the map was wrong and now it's now it's right. So, uh, so yeah, uh, basically Russia controls this this little stretch of road here, um, and and Ukraine doesn't. I, I have nothing else to say. It's just uh, 
I had heard uh, a while ago that Russia controlled this and I, I could not find any evidence. And then um, one of the Ukrainian soldiers in this area, um, I guess he may have been like rotated out or something, but he basically wrote, that Russia controls the area. He was like, why is everyone's map wrong? So I, I changed my map because I felt shame. Um, uh, okay, so down to Opitna. Constantine, do you know anything, or do you want to say anything about Opitna? Or should I just talk about Opitna? No, just go ahead. Okay. Um, Opitna. Uh, there was a lot of misinformation about Opitna. Um, people were saying that Opitna was captured. I don't think that's true. Uh, people were saying that Ukraine was already in the airport and they're about to capture Donetsk. That was ridiculous. I don't know where that even came from. Who said that? Dude, so many people were saying that. So, the ocean? So many people were saying that. That that they were in, they were in this they were in the airport and they're about to enter the city. It was like Man, I was like pulling my hair out reading this stuff. It was like, anyways. So, um, so basically, in Opitna, um, the main defense for the town was a series of fortifications that were along the straight line, um, and there was another series of fortifications up this tree line here, which is actually probably the same tree line. And then, um, there was, uh, they kind of branched out like this and they also were along this. So, uh, so these were, oh, I'm, you know what I'll do? I'm going to draw it with, uh, the range markers. <laughs> I'm going to draw it. These, these were like the fortifications. Okay. Um, why not? This is, this is a way to draw, right? This is kind of like drawing. So like those were the fortifications um for Opitna. Um so a while ago, like a like a pre while ago, like a while by a while ago, like anyways, uh Ukraine broke through this this top fortifications, which were like the outermost, right? And then Russia held this line for a really long time and uh Ukraine broke through um, like a month ago or something, they broke through back to, uh, like this intersection and they had captured like these basic, these like four lines, uh, here, like these four trench lines. Um, then there was a video that I misinterpreted, um, that showed Russia back in this main trench line, which was very confusing to me. And, um, I didn't realize that that video was actually very old. I, I assumed it was new and I was wrong. But anyways, uh, Ukraine then broke through this main fortification at this intersection and they went down into kind of, and they broke this also, this other really important fortification here. So at that point, and, and as of right now, Ukraine has broken through every major line of defense that Russia had before Opitna. Now, there's also talk, almost exclusively from Russians, I've not heard Ukrainians actually say this, but um, the Russians claimed that Ukraine captured um, this, like, quarry or whatever it is. Um, I, I've not seen actual evidence of that. I actually wouldn't doubt that they have. Um, the Russians are insisting that Ukraine has, and I've not heard Ukraine's say anything there's no video there's like no actual evidence but the russians are really adamant that ukraine captured it um now in opitna i've not heard any actual evidence that ukraine entered the town or if they did enter it that they currently control any of it um today um and obviously we don't know when this video was filmed it could have been filmed a month ago for all we know. Um, but um, Russia released this video from Opitna that was right here. Um, and uh, stop it. Uh, so th that video is right here, um, kind of in the kind of the top of Opitna, I guess. Anyways, so 
that's kind of the situation in the pit now. I think people were really wildly misinterpreting what was happening um, because what Ukraine did was a really big achievement in that they basically broke all of the lines of defense in front of Apitna. But people interpreted that as Ukraine capturing Apitna, and I, don't, I see no evidence of that. So, uh, do you think that's accurate, Constantine? Or do you know well, something I don't know? Yeah, I don't. I, I know. I don't know anything that you don't know. But I. I don't think that uh, Russia has open 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 as well. It's. It doesn't seem so. It. Oh, sorry. I don't think Ukraine entered the open. Uh, so I have not seen any evidence, and I have never heard. I did not hear anyone saying that it happened. I know only one person there. From uh, well, I cannot say because that unit is not open source, but. Um, he was very vague, uh, like was was not clear. But he said they had some successes. Once again, that's that's all I know. And uh, he does not did not provide me with a detailed map like yours. Yeah, I mean, Ukraine had like the, everything I just said is a major success. Like this is a, a really important. Like breaking these defenses was very difficult. Um, especially the like these two intersections were extremely well fortified. Like these these like a non-trivial. Like this is this is a really big deal. Like it's something that they should be proud of. But people just went way over the top with it. They couldn't just accept that you know Ukraine like broke through all of these really difficult defenses. They had to like invent this crazy story that they also like were attacking the airport and now like the whole city is going to collapse like people are going crazy with it and uh none of that like just uh just accept that they defeated really important fortifications <laughs> like i think that's enough that's enough like we don't need to invent stories um so anyways that's that's what i know about a pitna um, I had the town listed as uh, contested, but I, I, at this point, I, I do think that Russia does control the town itself. I think the town is borderline indefensible um, from a determined attack, uh, but I don't think Ukraine has attacked it yet, so... Yeah, people are very excited about Sevastopol. Have you have you paid attention to Sevastopol, uh, Constantine? I do know that this is a no. This no, is uh, yeah, image. I, I, I've heard this. I saw this videos like there are huge explosions, <laughs> and the fire. They, they, I just read that they say the fire is spreading, um, whatever it felt. Uh, but that's that's all all that we have. Yeah, this is all like uh, I don't actually know anything because i've been i've been streaming because this, this happened like during the stream so obviously i, I, I don't know anything store, so it's like new to me as well i'm just trying <laughs> to catch up while eating eating some rice and listening to you <laughs> yeah. These the, are... i think there's one in there from shot um and that seems to have the best view of what's going on oh from who shot oh here should be in the spreadsheet oh in the spreadsheet okay i'll look at the spreadsheet that's an explosion that's pretty cool mm -hmm. there, there is like a later um uh if you check the chat general chat you will have like a really nice image by nizar yeah that's that's mm -hmm. what this is oh yeah now i see uh, that one it's huge yeah, that's this, uh, it's all, it's all just exploding. Mm -hmm. A little rainbow right there. It's always nice to see Thank rainbows. You. Yep. So, uh, yeah, this is some, uh, crazy stuff going on in Sebastopol. <laughs> I have no idea what it, any of it means. Uh, <laughs> But I'm sure we'll find out. This is like, what is exploding? That's like a, 
Is it like fuel? I don't know. I have no well, idea. That one looked like maybe it was a drone being shot down by air maybe. defense. But these, this, it's just like uh, that. Yeah, no, that's big. And it had a secondary explosion at the end of it in that video. So whatever that is, it's a much more productive explosion. Yeah. Much more productive. <laughs> <laughs> I post a new image if you're interested. Okay. Well, that's a, a, a pretty good looking image. You could probably even yeah, it's figure like out what this wallpaper, is. Wallpaper image. <laughs> Look for a wallpaper. You could probably figure out what this is from this if you had the time, which I don't currently. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it does. It, they said it was in like increment, and uh, isn't isn't that where they have like ammo? If I'm, if I'm right. I like yeah, like that. like here, like um, that's like that's like the Ingerman area, and this is the ammo area, which is not that far, right? It's only um, uh, this is very exciting. This is uh, four kilometers away. I didn't mean to draw a circle, but I did. Uh, so it's four kilometers. So there's like all these like ammo things, right? So um, maybe. I, I have no idea what exploded. I'm just I'm just trying to guess really. So anyways. Um I guess I'll go back to the map. Um here we are. Um uh I I have no news about any of these areas. I, I, I there's like no changes um in uh that I know of in Marinka. Okay, so there there was one thing. Um we, we had uh, drone footage of Russia advancing on the 8th, which was four days ago, um, that they, there's drone footage, um, I could probably even go back and, so the, the drone footage was like here, they were hitting U Ukrainians here. Um, so I have heard that Ukraine went on like a, like a counterattack and retook all this land. But I don't actually know if that's true. But that that's a that's a thing that people talk about. And um if if okay, so uh Novo Mayorska. People okay, so what's going on in Novo Mayorska is uh it seems to have the hallmarks of a failed attack. Um in that we don't see much progression on satellite imagery. We don't really see them shelling um, the position, like heavy shelling and positions you would expect if Ukraine were advancing. It seems that y Ukraine did an attack and it may have been repelled. Um, we do have some, uh, like, some um shelling in the middle of the town but that could be ukrainian shelling um they're shelling at this kind of tree intersection which again could also be ukrainian shelling but also we know that ukraine moved down this road so who knows and they're shelling on on these tree lines which we know ukraine used in the assault and um somewhat interestingly they're shelling on this tree line over here which I don't know if it was involved in the assault at all, um, so I don't really know what's going on there. But overall, this has hallmarks of a failed attack. It, it's it's like obviously I don't have the information to say if it was a failed attack, but uh, we also don't have information suggesting it was a successful attack. So uh, yeah, that's I, I just uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, it's just the when, when you look at the news in Novo Mayorska, just um, um, be skeptical of claims of victory, I guess. Like, uh, th there, there's not much evidence that uh, Ukraine advanced here successfully. That, that It looks like they, they kind of moved up 
Um, they assaulted, and they're pushed back. The 13th ship repair plant. That seems important. What do you... Exit, do you know anything about ship repair plants? Uh, I don't particularly know anything other than that um, a lot of their ship repair plants have been quite full of ships being prepared, repaired. Sorry. So uh, that would be interesting if that's what that is for sure. I um I typed in ship repair plant in the map and it didn't it didn't say anything. <laughs> I learned nothing. Uh so uh yeah. <laughs> it just said, Did you mean Sevastopol? <laughs> no. Anyways. Uh, Why can't it read uh, your mind and figure out oh, what you need? Just tell me where the ship repair plant is. Anyways, coordinates or what do you need? I was just curious where it is. Why do you know where it is? Let me let me, let me link you the the Google Map. Yeah, just in, in, check the general. Okay. You you just had it handy. It's like, oh, it's right here, by the way. Oh, that's that's that is where it linked me on the. What did it actually link me to the right place and just lied to me? Because this this is where it said it said, but it it just said Sevastopol. All right, so there it is. That's interesting. It is kind of it an anchor in there too. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. I don't really know what to make of that. I'm not like a ship plant repair expert. Only way thinking about ship plants. Um. Anyways, so, uh, yeah, so there, there's only really one more area to talk about. <laughs> there's, like, almost no news today. I set it up front, but I, I kind of feel bad, and then I continue to talk about news that didn't happen. But um, today there was a video that I'm certain is old, um, probably at least two weeks old, probably. But but it was a, uh, a Russian um a vdv i believe um they were sitting in this little tree line and they were complaining that um cluster munitions were landing near them and they were they said um cluster munitions land near them constantly like every day and they don't like it constantine did you see that one I saw it, but I did not watch it. I just read the description because I was in a place uh, at work I couldn't not. You know? Yeah, I mean, you didn't. The video doesn't add much, but but uh, the video lets you <laughs> geolocate it. That other than that, doesn't add much. Um, I, I'm certain this video is old because Ukraine has pushed back this, pushed past this position. Um, in fact, there was a, a video today of, um. I believe this was a Lancet drone um, striking a Ukrainian trench. Um, this trench was right here, which is oddly close to Verbova. <laughs> so uh, we're talking, you know, very short distances, um, a kilometer, less than a kilometer um, away. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, I just think if if you want to go back, just um, a picture of the burning stuff in Sevastopol, in Sevastopol uh, and link to the map where I managed to geolocate it, I think, uh, by the cranes, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. So you think it's right there? Yeah, I think so. Do you contribute to the map now, Constantine? No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> so, I don't know how to do it, I'm not. I'm not, a, you need an IT expert. An IT expert? Yeah. To contribute to the you... map? Yeah, I'm, I'm not good with computers. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, there's that on fire. Um, now 
to uh, Nova Prokopivka. Um, Ukraine has advanced up to this uh, kind of intersection of these tree, these three tree lines here. Um, they have done so with tanks and infantry. It was actually very interesting to see tanks move up this far and to see them engaging this close to uh, Novoprakopivka um, and, and Russia desperately trying to destroy them and failing. Um, they shot an AT gem and missed. They shot a Lancet and missed. You can see the Lancet exploding in the tank right there. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, they're getting really close to the town, like, uh, really close. And if we kind of go back to these, um, these fortification lines, uh, the town is in front of the, the main, um, I don't even want to call it the main line. It's like the, the main, it's, it's like a vehicle trap. <laughs> it's like their, their vehicle trap line. It's, it's like the point where driving a vehicle is annoying. So, um, the town is in front of that. And it, it also, I don't actually know if it's true, but it seems that there aren't as many mines around Novo Prokopivka as there are around other towns that, uh, I'm not saying there's no mines. It just seems that there's, there's a lot fewer, especially when you see tanks just kind of driving around, like, uh, they didn't seem afraid of mines. That's what I'm trying to say. It seems that their main fear were the AT jams. Um, so, which to be fair is probably scarier than the mine, but, uh, yeah, they, they're getting very, very close to Nova Paco Pivka, uh, from the Northwest, uh, probably close enough that, uh, considering these, these videos that we get are old, there is a, um, a few days before they're released. Typically they're not usually released the same day that they're filmed. So they're, these videos that we see at this point may be a week old because they came out a few days ago and they were probably a few days old already. So, um, who knows, like Ukraine may be assaulting the town right now. I don't, I don't know. Um, the, the, to the North near, uh, Rabatina, uh, Russia has been counterattacking. They claim to be pushing Ukraine out of this forest. I don't actually see much evidence of that. It could be true. I'm not really sure. Um, and uh, uh, of note, we see that um, Bober, who were um, one of our main sources of the Ukrainian advance, and that they kept publishing videos of Ukraine advancing um, for the past few days. They've only been releasing videos from way back, <laughs> including this video here, um, where they hit a Bradley of a drone. Um, but they've also been releasing videos from like further back. Uh, they, I don't know if they've been pushed to, uh, the rear or if they've just been told they're not allowed to publish videos from the front anymore or something. It, it, it's like a very obvious, uh, change in, in what they publish now. Um, so one of our sources of the Ukrainian advance has, uh, they no longer publishing the advance, I guess. Um, Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of all the news that I have. It really was not very exciting, to be honest. Um, there were some mildly interesting things. There was a, a drone attack on a boat, um, right here in, in the, the Dnipro River. Um, there was a, a missile strike, um, here in the Dachi area. There, um, there were a bunch of Mistas destroyed including right here, um, Mr. Got hit by a Gimler. Um, so yeah. I Andrew, think... are you moving the map around? Cause I can't see it moving right now. Yes. Oh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm basically <laughs> done though. So, uh, and, um, over here, um, near, um, Donetsk and Marinka, uh, Ukraine destroyed a, another Mista. 
Russia is hemorrhaging misters. They've lost so many. I don't know how many they have that are operational, but the number keeps going down. So, uh, <laughs> it's a hista. <laughs> it's a, okay. I agree. It's a hitza. It's not a mista. Um, so, Constantine, how many mistas do you think they have? Musta howitzers? Yes. 500. Do you think that was 500 before the war or 500 currently? 500 total operational before the war. Okay. I'm not sure how many they've lost. But I think, so, I think they've been averaging one a day. Something like that. It's been a lot. Yeah, I hope they don't have much. Do they have? Do they produce them? I heard that they do not. I don't think but so. But I can imagine. But I can imagine that um, they do refurbish them, and if it's destroyed, doesn't mean it can be refurbished. Often, like it's destroyed, it cannot be used now, but it can be refurbished at the ca like complete overhaul uh, that takes like five, four or five months, but you know it's still. It's still cheaper than manufacturing new one. Yeah. Uh, it happens, for example, one of the things when they burn out, like you can actually recover almost everything. Uh, you just need the electronics, uh, which is not, there are no fancy electronics there. Um, and you need, you know, uh, just assemble and disassemble it, basically. Yeah, there is, um, I, not all of them, obviously, but a lot of these uh, mistas or whatever, uh, they're catastrophically exploding. <laughs> like, like a good number of them. They are, like, they turn into a crater. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, well, when that, I'm not saying all of them, but some definitely, you know, can, can be restored. Uh, and I can imagine that they probably had, uh, if I'm saying like 500 operational, uh, that probably means they also had some in storage, uh, which they're pulling out. So I don't think it's it's like catastrophic, but it's it may get there. I can't remember the name of it, but the, there was the the newest version, like uh, like the most I'm, modernized one I'm, was recently I'm, damaged. It's just M at the end, which which means modernized, yeah. like two M or something. One of those was recently taken out. I don't think it wasn't destroyed, but it was damaged pretty badly. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of all the news I got, really. Oh, and uh, Russia lost another uh, catapult, another drone catapult, uh, which is interesting because Ukraine has been. publishing a lot of videos of destroying these catapults. I don't know if they are intentionally targeting them. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or maybe they saved up videos to publish all at once. I'm not really sure, but, um, this, this interesting. Things like that usually happen when you have like, you know, we have uh, a lot of specialized units. Uh, you, I don't want to, uh, right now everyone is special forces, but we have, it's not exactly, you know, those cool guys with the beards uh, anymore. It's <laughs> more like, you know, technical use that do operate drones uh, that can, you know, new, know, have knowledge of some specifics of enemy um of enemy technology of like targeted identification uh they have special equipment themselves or uh like ev uh, for electronic reconnaissance additional sensors uh etc they have access to some maybe additional satellite imagery uh and they have more like a direct link with the uh, with our killer brigades that possess such uh, weapons as uh, HIMARS and uh, um, Excaliburs and, and precision weaponry. Uh, so, and when sometimes you get no, like uh, you have a specific, um, like an uh, order to hunt for these things, 
Uh, and then you see 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 more strikes because we usually have less uh, capacity to strike than we find the targets. Um, and I'm talking about precision weaponry like HIMARS uh, or or Excalibur uh, Excalibur capable weapons in the area with enough ammo. Um, because like you see a lot of targets, but you know you don't have the luxury to do three four shots. Uh, you to adjust, uh, so you have only like one chance to hit it, maybe two at best. So you need this. Um, or you need to be precise. Uh, and if they got an order, like okay, let's hunt the let's hunt the Lancet, uh, uh, Lancet crews launchers, and and I, I'm more interested in not crews, but those who operate. The, uh, sorry, not launchers, but those who operate them. I think the launcher itself is not is not a you know a very uh, complex piece of equipment, uh, but experienced people who actually do this for and now they have really uh, guys who are really experienced. They have really, you know, they've been operating them for like half for a year or more. Uh, I think those are like uh, quite hard to um, you know to replace. And I think it's it's more valuable than the launchers and and Lancet themselves. I agree. I imagine training them is very difficult. As you you can give them like a like a simulator and whatever, but at the end of the day, each pilot is going to take a it's going to take a few missions for them to learn how to pilot the drone correctly. Yeah, and, and don't forget, you don't want to expose too many people um, to this technology, right? It's not like it's absolutely super tech. It's uh, nothing there is is super super tech, but still, you want to limit. Uh, you have you want to have a good selection uh, because first of all, it's work with electronics. It's work. It's work with a computer with computers. Uh, so, and Russian general population that's been mobilized. Um, is a bit uh, like older, uh, and from the villages where people, you know, they they have trouble using smartphones. So I imagine they need younger people and controlling the Lancet. It, it's it's basically, and I had an argument recently with a couple of um, technical fellas, you know. But this is basically I consider it to be an FPV drone in the end. Uh, like at least elements of FPV drone, right? At the end, you control it, um, and it, you gotta have a lot of uh, for doing that. You gotta have a lot of motor skill. Like um, I don't know the right uh, word for it in English. Like uh, you know, muscle memory, uh, motor skills. Like where you you know getting used to doing some uh, small movements, um, and it's this this type of skills is quite hard to acquire if you're like. Past, uh, past past forty, let's say past forty thirty five, um, and never never had uh, never played with a computer or anything like that. So I can imagine they they may have problems getting uh, getting the right people. Um, of course, it's not like I'm not saying that it's oh or we we are lost the screw and now we're so so fucked up that we cannot operate anymore. No, it's not anymore. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying that it just adds additional problems for them. Um, and for example, like training on, uh, well, yeah, it, it, like I'm saying, it, it, it's quite, uh, you, you need to spend a lot of time to train those people. Um, and also keep in mind that you have like one, when Lancet flies, you don't have much, it's not like you've, gonna fire 10 of them you have one or two at the best so you gotta know what, what, what you're doing before the uh, equipment relocates and i think what we've seen recently for example i think past months and correct me if i'm wrong andrew here because you you know this much better than me uh, we've seen a less successful lancet strikes than before um it may be related i don't know i mean there are there have been Lancet strip. Uh, it's I don't have stats on Lancets. Um, there have been a number of Lancet hits, um, mostly on artillery pieces. It seems that 
Uh, and I think that the one video today of a Ukrainian trench, I think it was a Lancet, uh, because the explosion was much bigger than FPV. Um, so I think it was a, I think it was a Lancet. Uh, you, you couldn't see what flew in because the, the drone filming it decided to like turn its attention to something else right as, uh, the explosion happened. So, uh, but, uh, there, yeah, there, there have been Lancets <laughs> that we, there's the, the video, the Lancet missing the tank the other day, but, uh, uh, from what I can tell. Lancets have a flaw in their design, um, and the flaw is they don't have good yaw control. Um, so the the Lancet tends to drift through the air, and it's especially susceptible to wind when it's doing its final approach. So um, if, if there's a crosswind, uh, or really any wind, like in any direction, um, it, it seems that that lack of yaw control seems to push the lancet into missing either low or to the left or right. It's usually to the right for some reason. Uh, so I, I think that's a, a fundamental flaw of the drone. Probably from the shape of its wings, because it's like an X. Instead of like a cross, you know what I mean? I don't know, but uh, I've seen like, uh, I'm, I'm last month, I think I saw a decrease in Lancet, uh, in Lancet statistics. I did not like, I just kind of have this feeling it's not like it's definitive and I calculated the strikes, but I think it would be interesting. Uh, but once again, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I feel like they have, uh, had less successful strikes on Lancet. It doesn't mean they had less, uh, Lancet strikes because, you know, they, they don't publish, uh, failed ones. I think at least I've seen like well, a couple of days. Well, they do. Yeah. Yeah. But, but <laughs> and they they're claim, funny. <laughs> they claim that it was a success. I mean, they hit a tree. Uh, <laughs> you see the one when they targeted, the. Um, the grad system, like when it go, went up the trees and the lancet <laughs> flew in a different place, like 15 meters on the side. Yeah, there was, there was one where um, they filmed the lancet, like from the point of view of the lancet, it totally hit the tank. But then there was another drone that filmed it and the lancet like completely missed the tank in a tree. <laughs> Oh man, that's why like I think flying a, a lancet is actually really difficult. Uh, Cause like from the point of the view of the lancet, you're flying in a straight line, but you're not flying in a straight line because you have no you have no yaw control. So you're actually like flying in like a curve. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Like it's not. And also, um, it's hard to tell how close you are to what you're flying at from the point of view of the Lancet's camera, uh, the, the camera, um, it's like kind of like a fisheye lens sort of thing where things are, they appear, I don't know how to describe it. Cause they, they, they look like they're, they're a certain distance from you, but they're not. And it's, it's not that they're further from you or closer than you. It's like both, <laughs> it like depends on how far away they are. It's like, uh, it's like the camera, like the lens is like nonlinear and how, how you see things. It, it's all very confusing. If you, if you watch the video, you can tell why they miss a lot. Cause I, I, like I, the Lancet has a lot of like fundamental flaws. Um, anyways, I, I have no further news. There's just, I just see lots of, um, lots of things exploding. <laughs> People talking about what may be causing the exploding. I have no clue. Um, I would like to remind you that Ukraine does have the ability to, um, do ground attack with their Neptune. So you can't rule out that this was a Neptune. But yeah. Anyways, that's kind of all the news I have. I'm sorry the news was kind of boring. We kind of, we tried to spruce it up um, with other, 
other topics, but. Anyways, Constantine, do you, is there anything else you want to talk about? Do you have like a, do you want to talk about your, uh, your, your fundraiser? You're doing another fundraiser, right? No. Okay. Uh, we're done with our fundraiser, but we're going to start probably a new one tomorrow. That's, that's what I meant. Out. Huh? That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, we've been reached out for a guy from 28th Brigade, um, and they need our help. They're not very famous, but they're like fighting like beasts uh, around Bakhmut. Um, and uh, we they they told us that they have uh, quite a shortage of drones right now, so we gotta help. Well, that sounds great. And of course, and the thirty second brigade. I recently made and uh, like wrote a small piece about about the brigade and its issues. Uh, right now, they are not famous as well, and they have they lack drones. So we'll try to combine um this fundraiser i don't know yet the details we'll probably work them out tomorrow uh, but i hope we're gonna have uh we're gonna be able to fundraise for two brigades at the same time so that's gonna be around uh, 50 60 thousand dollars drones are expensive They're... yeah and we get like we don't get just one you know because we we're doing it on, on the brigade level uh, so we're we're not like you know sometimes you uh, I get a request for example from some company and uh, inside the brigade that it means like they need one or two they don't need more because they have uh, uh, they usually you know it is gonna enough for to last them like a week or two then they also have different sources uh, for the drones but uh, but when the um, brigade comes in you understand that they have to give like three drones to this battalion inside brigade two drones to that battalion etc and it takes uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know resources so uh, this is going to be a brigade wide so that's why the the numbers are much higher than than your normal uh, you know help this guy help this pilot drone yeah so um anyway i uh... One of the people in the chat asked me um, which way I prefer um, donations towards um, my map. Uh, I don't actually know which has the which which method has the the least um, fees. It's probably buy me a coffee, but uh, in my opinion, like buy me a coffee and PayPal are probably both roughly equal. I don't actually, I, I haven't actually read this, the, the details on which is actually technically better, but, but, uh, if you, if you'd like to donate towards my map, um, either of those is, uh, is preferable. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's all I gotta say. And, uh, you'll do your thing for your drones and we'll try to raise money for your drones and, uh, Give them to the brigades, and everything would be great. Um, yep. Yeah. Oh, um, we also have a question for you, Exit. Um, where can people listen to the Bond Space from Thursday? Uh, from last Thursday, I will repost it and pin it to my uh, profile in about 30 seconds here. Okay. Well, that answers that question. So they can go to exit 266 on Twitter and I will put it in there. Okay. All right. So um, I think that's the stream, everybody. We'll, uh, I'll be back on Friday. Thank you for everyone who came and listened. And uh, yeah, thank you to Exit and to uh, Constantine for uh, helping out. And um, yeah, you can share the stream with your friends if you'd like to. I don't know. Uh, anyway, goodbye.